Not no, we're still in John 16, 7. The comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, and the standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. Can you say close fellowship? <laughs> but if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship. Say close fellowship with you. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but lo, I'll be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. And God is in heaven. Father God is in heaven on his throne in heaven. Jesus sits at his right hand and the Holy Spirit lives in us, bringing us the presence of the Father and the Son. And we're to be in close fellowship with him. You can talk with the Holy Spirit all day long. He wants to lead you and guide you. Is a wonderful friend. Now, Jesus didn't actually start his public ministry until he was 33. So he trained 33 years for a three year ministry. John the Baptist trained 30 years for a ministry that lasted four to five months. Wonder how many people would be willing to do that. <laughs> We want to get born again and get a platform because we got a gift. <laughs> Amen. And I'll just throw this out for good measure. <laughs> Why not? The Bible says not to put a new convert in leadership. Because if you do, they'll become stupefied with pride. <laughs> and people do that all the time. Some kid will get saved and they can sing good, so the next thing you know, they're on the platform. And then the next thing you know, they got a record deal and then they're traveling all over the country. And then the next thing you know, they fall into sin and another embarrassment comes to the name of Christ. And as leaders in the body of Christ, we should not do that to people. You gotta have some preparation. You gotta have some training. Gotta have some experience. Amen. Don't be in such a big hurry to get where you think you're going. Don't run out ahead of God. I mean, when God called me to teach or told me I was going to teach, I thought for sure the next day I was going to the world. Well, it didn't work that way. <laughs> it did not work that way. We all, if you're going to be worth your salt, you're all going to have to have your own little wilderness experience. Thank you, whoever that is. <laughs> Some of you are in training right now and you don't like what you're going through. And you don't understand it and it doesn't seem fair, but later on you will understand. I look back at my life now and gosh, there's so much that goes on in a life. But boy, we can learn from every single thing that we go through. And when you get to my point, it's like I look back and even the mistakes I made, it's like I learned from those. And instead of being so upset about where you're at, ask God what you can get out of it. What can I reap out of this? What can I, how can this make me a better person? Amen? Oh, and by the way, just God's not alive to serve us. We're supposed to be serving him. Just, just in case you didn't know that, I wanted to be sure that I told you that. <laughs> He's not like this spiritual slot machine, you know, where you throw in a prayer and pull a lever and expect to get a download of everything you want. Matter of fact, why don't you just take a vacation from telling God what you want? Come on, I dare you, just give it three months. And don't ask him for anything except more of him. Come on, we're going for it tonight. I know you paid to come and hear this. Well, we have other speakers that may be nicer to you. I don't know. Lisa, are you going to be nicer to them Saturday? No, I know, I know you. You'll go after it too. 
Bishop Jakes will be here in the morning. Maybe he'll be nicer. I don't know. Now, wait a minute. You sound happier about him than you do me. I know you do. I, and I know, that, I know that you like you like it straight, don't you? But Jesus, now I want you to get this. Jesus did not try to go out and do any mighty works until he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to have to cross some denominational lines here. <laughs> Luke 3, 21 through 23. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized, while he was still praying, the visible heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the bodily form of a dove and a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Now the next thing the Bible says, after Luke 3, 21 through 23, then we go right to Luke chapter 4, <laughs> where it says that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil 40 days and 40 nights. What? Huh? What? Why would he do that? I mean, the guy's been in training for 33 years. Luke 4, verse 1. Then Jesus, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit. See, the only way that you can handle a wilderness fight with the devil is if you're full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit. You can't do it if you've got to just have feel-good stuff to be happy. Come on. He returned from the Jordan and was led in by the Holy Spirit for during 40 days in the wilderness in the desert where he was tempted, tried, tested a little bit. <laughs> Exceedingly by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days and when they were completed, he was hungry. Now I want you to watch this. The devil waited until he was at his weakest. And he does the same thing with us. He waits until we're really tired. Or like a lot of times for me, I mean, you would not believe some of the stupid stuff that happens to us when we're out on the road. And it's, it's because I need to be able to keep my mind on what I'm doing. But the devil works overtime trying to get me flustered and frustrated. We got to the FBO today. We had been guaranteed four automobiles. They had one. Nobody knew where the other three were. <laughs> Took 45 minutes to find those three and they'd never left the rental lot where they were. And you know, I go on and on and on. I took a nap this afternoon and I wear a sleep mask because my eyes are dry and I didn't want to put the rubber band part around my hair so I just laid on my back and I gently laid it on my eyes. I was so careful. I didn't want to make it tight because I didn't want to get any marks on my face. And when I woke up, I had this big deep line under here and one under here. And we had to work and work and work and work. <clears throat> okay, now listen. Here's what I, I want you to understand. I'm so serious about this message tonight. When we are frustrated, tense, irritable, upset, you can't sense what the Holy Spirit is doing or wants to do. And this is exactly why the world is so full of strife and stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> A 
Anybody else, does, do you ever, you ever have a temptation to get upset about this little stuff? Oh, come on, don't, don't give me that. We have to order food out. We get food to go a lot because I don't cook. I, I did for a lot of years and I was a good cook, but I tried a couple of years ago to make Dave's breakfast and I, well, I, we'll have to give the, show you the picture sometime, but one of the eggs I cracked and I missed the skillet and it ended up in the stove. I mean, I don't know how anybody could have made a mess like I made trying to cook two eggs. And so I just don't cook anymore. Darlene Check said to me one time, don't you just love to cook when you're home? And I said, no, <laughs> don't like it at all. So we order food out a lot. And I am telling you that at least, at least 50% of the time the orders are wrong. At least 50, maybe even more than that. Now, this is how dumb we are sometimes. So this has been going on for years. And I thought the other day, duh. Because I would say, this just happens too often to be a coincidence. It's just like uncanny. And then I realized, hear me, preaching the word 45 years, telling everybody what to do. Not one time had I ever prayed about that situation. All I did was get upset because my food wasn't right. <laughs> <laughs> you know how often we just get rattled and upset instead of just praying? And... Come on. Now, you know, the devil was called Lucifer and he was one of the archangels, very beautiful, but he had a problem with pride and he decided that he was going to lift his throne above the throne of God and God said, I'll show you what you're gonna get. He got kicked out of heaven. And he took a third of the angels with him, which I guess proves that angels have free will. And uh, so the devil can only be in one place at one time, but he has a lot of little helpers. Thank you.